Have you ever had somebody try to make the claim to you that over the last several millennia, human knowledge has been doubling faster and faster, and that as of today, human knowledge is doubling every 12 to 13 hours? It's a cool claim, and it's the kind of thing that you could accept if you didn't think about it too much. Because once you do, you realize that you get into some messy questions, like what is human knowledge? If you go to Google and you type in human knowledge double and hit enter, you'll be greeted with hundreds of articles, both scientific and popular, all claiming pretty much the same thing. That in 1982, a guy named Buckminster Fuller in his book Critical Path had developed the idea of a knowledge doubling curve, which basically just tracked how often human knowledge had been doubling over the past two millennia. Most of these articles also reference IBM's publication, The Toxic Terabyte, which claims that human knowledge will be doubling every 12 to 13 hours by sometime in the 20 teens. Except it won't, because none of this is actually true. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. When I first heard this information, the first thing I did was go to The Toxic Terabyte and read it to see what it actually said. And sure enough, on the front page right there, it says the world's information base will be doubling every 11 hours. Except if you read the whole paper, you realize that they're not talking about human knowledge. They're talking about digital data in excess being produced by too many things being connected to the Internet. I should also point out I'm not the first person to notice this, and I'll cite some of the other people that have pointed this out before in the description. Okay, but what about the other half to this? Buckminster Fuller and his book Critical Path. Surely everybody's not misciting that book. Right? Nowhere in the whole book does Buckminster Fuller mention a knowledge doubling curve or any of the specific data mentioned by any of the articles. This is where this whole question got started for me, because if that information didn't come from him, then where did it come from? So I should probably be a little more specific about what these articles claim Buckminster discovered. People claim that Buckminster took all of human knowledge up until 1 BCE and considered that to be one unit of knowledge. He then looked at the next 1500 years and noticed that all of human knowledge was doubled by that point. He then estimated that human knowledge again doubled by 1750, again by 1900, and that by 1940, human knowledge was doubling about once every 25 years. Since human knowledge is not a well-defined quantity, finding the original publication and looking at the methods they used is highly important to verifying whether or not this information is true. Collectively, this information is known as the knowledge doubling curve, but at this point it was a mystery to me who actually developed it. The first thing I tried to do was go to Google's database of books and just search for knowledge doubling curve sometime before people started talking about it on the internet, which is around 2012. I came across several books by a guy named Conrad Pritcher, who didn't have a source for where the information originally came from, but he cited who he had heard it from, a guy named Calvin Linton. Calvin Linton was the dean of Washington University for a while, and he did have several publications, but most of them were either on how to write essays or on Christian history. However, he was listed as an author on two encyclopedias, which I promptly bought and excitedly opened to find nothing. There wasn't some citation or reference to the original information as I had hoped, and with that, I was back to square one. But then I found something interesting. I found an old blog post from 2006 in which the author describes the knowledge doubling curve, calls it a knowledge doubling curve, but can't remember the author or any of the specific information about the years. 
What makes this interesting is that this is several years before we see anybody else on the internet linking Buckminster Fuller to the knowledge doubling curve, and yet there in the comments is somebody saying, I think this is Fuller's curve from Buckminster Fuller's book, Critical Path. I'm tempted to guess that this is the source of the internet's confusion on this topic, because A, this is the first time I could find anybody linking critical path to the knowledge doubling curve, and B, this comment right here. This comment describes the knowledge doubling curve date for date, except it doesn't attribute it to Buckminster. It instead attributes it to a guy named George Anderla in 1973, 10 years before Buckminster would publish Critical Path. A quick Google search reveals a whole other corner of the internet in which Anderla is the source of this information and not Buckminster. It's even the primary thing listed on his Wikipedia page. Every book and article linking him to the knowledge doubling curve says that he made his publication in 1973, and at that time he was working for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And after a little bit of searching, I found what I thought was surely the right document. Information in 1985, a forecasting study of information needs and resources, published in 1973 by George Anderla for the OECD. The document talks about the exponential increase of information, ways to quantify information, the increase in technology, and yet nowhere in the whole document did they mention the knowledge doubling curve. Sure, he talks about things very similar to the knowledge doubling curve, but what I wanted to find was the source of this information that's found all over the internet. After searching through some other promising titles also published in 1973 by Anderla, like The Future of Information, but finding nothing, I soon became discouraged. Then, Almost by accident, I stumbled across a publication by the UN from 1983 entitled General Introduction to the Techniques of Information and Documentation Work. What's interesting about this document is that at the end of page 5, there's a footnote citing Anderla's information in 1985, and just below it on the next page, it mentions the knowledge doubling curve, date for date. Except it doesn't attribute the knowledge doubling curve to Anderla, it instead says according to the American National Education Association. Anderla's footnote is instead correlated to a paragraph on the previous page. It's possible that this document is the source of the crossover between Anderla and the knowledge doubling curve. Given Anderla's area of study, it would be pretty easy to see this footnote and assume that it correlated to the information relating to the knowledge doubling curve. With the National Education Association in mind, I was able to push my search further and further back in time, starting with a 1965 congressional hearing transcript in which a congressman mentions the information. Next, I found a United States Air Force manual that had it in it for some reason, and that was from 1963. Both of these cited the National Education Association as the source of the knowledge doubling curve. And then, finally, I found it. An article called Current Trends in Curriculum Planning by Ole Sand of the National Education Association in which he mentions all of the data that we talk about as being associated with the knowledge doubling curve. This research article was first published on September 1st, 1963 10 years before Anderla, and 20 years before Buckminster. So that's it. We've solved the mystery, right? Well, kind of. See, like a virus or bacteria mutates over time, so too has the knowledge doubling curve. Throughout the 60s, you see most people putting an emphasis on the fact that knowledge doubled between 1950 and 1960, and after the 60s, you see more people mention the fact that knowledge apparently doubled between 1960 and 1967 as well. And here's where we find a problem. In September of 1962, an article is published called Preventing Technical Obsolescence in Petroleum Engineers and Scientists. This is a full year before the National Education Association's paper comes out, and yet in this article it claims that a scientist named Gaylor has estimated that between 1950 and 1960 human knowledge doubled, and will double again between 1960 and 1967. 
This is core information that we consider to be associated with the knowledge doubling curve. So does that mean that the knowledge doubling curve predates the National Education Association's publication? And looking back on Olsan's paper, we notice that he doesn't claim that that information comes from the National Education Association. He kind of just states it as if it's common knowledge. At each step throughout history, people have misattributed this information to people that sound likely to be the authors, from Buckminster to Linton to Underla. And there's lots of other people that this information has been attributed to throughout history that I just didn't have enough time to talk about in this video. So is it possible that the National Education Association is just one of the earliest cases of this misattribution? And that's as far as I've gotten. I found a few other scientist names besides Gaylor that come up as the source of the information before the NEA's publication, but I haven't been able to find any of their papers. So the only thing I know for certain right now is that if I'm going to figure this out, it's not going to be done with just me. So if you're interested, I'm going to set up an email address and uh, I'd be happy to share with you all of the information I've collected and I'd be happy if anybody would like to help me track down the origins of this information. And if all goes well, I'll hopefully be making a follow-up to this very shortly.